Hi everyone, uh, Nicoletta Morales with Culture Focus Magazine. I'm excited that today I have a historian, Dr. Michael Berenbaum, who is the executive producer of a very important film called Dara of Jasenovic, which is the official Serbian selection for the Oscars. Um, so, Dr. Michael, I, I, I absolutely love the film, but it was very hard to watch. Uh, being that I'm from the Balkans, Bulgaria, <laughs> um, that history is very familiar, uh, at least in, in our territory, and it's very brutal. Um, so I'm very happy that you put it out there to the for the world to see. But what's important about the film is that it's the first ever feature to show um, how Serbs, Romas, and Jews were treated at the Croatian camp, concentration camp. So tell me, how did you come to get involved with the film and the director of the film, and why now? Well, um... Gaga Antonovic has been a long, uh, a long time friend of mine. Um, we actually met through our wives, and as our wives, our wives had worked together. As our wives worked together, we be, uh, talked their business. We talked our business. Discovered that we had a deep mutual interest, uh, both in film and in the area of genocide. And I had uh, worked in the region of the Balkans. Uh, I've done uh, a museum in uh, nor what is now North Macedonia. I'd written on the Bulgarians and the Jews and all of that. So um, when he set out to do this, he sought my advice, uh, my, my participation. And I was very pleased to work with Gaga because I have long admired his uh, artistry and his craft. Well, I'm really glad that you you decided to work together and come up with this uh, important film, at least as a Balkan and um, Slavic person. I thank you on behalf of everyone for putting that story out there. It deserves to be seen. As a historian, can you tell us the importance of 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 the movie? I mean, we don't get to see that every day, and it's well, a very important story. Let's begin by talking about the fact, you know, because you've lived in the Balkan, that there are a whole range of ethnic rivalries and ethnic Absolutely. rivalries that have um, produced conflict for generations. In fact, uh, the great conflict of the 90s uh, was only settled uh, after a protracted discussion. And I'm convinced that the uh, Dayton Accords were only accepted not because anybody won, but because every side believed that the other side lost more than they did. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Yasuno, let's talk first of all about Yasunovic. Yasunovic was a series of camps um, and had two unique dimensions. Number one, it was a death camp that was not established by the Germans, the only one that was established by a non-German faction, by the, the Ustasha regime, uh, and consequently it had the dimension of a death camp inspired by the Germans, sort of the infectious nature of now that you have a wartime situation and uh, mass murder, what we now call genocide and the like, is taking place, we can now do that as well. It was the um, Eustacia effort to cooperate with the German and show their utility because uh, it served as a killing center for the Jews in the quotation marks final solution to the Jewish problem. And even some Jews who weren't killed there were deported to Auschwitz. Once the Serbs were killing Jews and Roma, what are pejoratively called as gypsies, they, once the, the uh, Ustasha were killing, um, uh, were killing Jews and Roma, they decided uh, that they also could use it to kill Serbs in the traditional rivalry and they attacked Serbs, they had something else which was unique in this, and that is they had a children's camp that was used for re-education, again, almost mirroring what the Germans did in what is called Lebensborn, which was the adopting and uh, kidnapping and taking into Germany of smart Aryan-looking um, kids and raising them as Aryans in order to increase the quotation marks master race without bothering with pregnancy and and uh, and young young child rearing. So this is an attempt to enter that world 
what's very distinct and powerful about the film is we see it through the eyes of a young child. And we oftentimes were given a glimpse of the violence and of the awful violence because in one sense, the Nazi, Nazi death camps were designed to kill at a distance with an assembly line factory of murder. Here, the killing was much more personal and much more direct, and therefore, in a certain way, not more effective or more total, but more brutal. But we don't see all of the brutality. We see it in the eyes and the reaction of a 10-year-old girl and what is what she sees and her lost innocence and we see it in the struggle that she has to preserve her brother because her mother is dead her older brother is dead all she has is the infant uh, brother that she must care for her father is nearby but she doesn't know it and he only learns of it but he's helpless to um to reunite and to protect his children. So it's an entree into these camps. I, I found that part particularly that, that we see it through the eyes of 10 year old Dara, very, um, very moving, but at the same time, it still felt brutal. I mean, the scenes <laughs> were very hard to, it's very emotional era, of course, it's emotional to watch. Look, uh, a filmmaker on the Holocaust has to struggle. If you don't show the evil, the violence, the brutality, then you're sugarcoating it. Absolutely. If you do show too much of it, then the audience becomes numb. And the worst part of the audience, it becomes almost a pornography of evil. So what um, Gaga did so um, nicely is to give you a glimpse of what was happening in all of its brutality and then forcing you to see it through the eyes of a young woman who was seeing it. And then you had a young girl, we can say 10 years old, we don't have to use the word woman, uh, a young girl who was seeing it and you had to imagine what she was seeing through those eyes. And the other part of it is in filming with children, we had to protect them from the evil that was going on all around them. And what, one of the things he did very uniquely is he took um, children from the countryside, what we might call peasant children, who lived on farms, who worked with animals, who saw death around them because they lived in nature. And when they got a break from filming, they didn't go on their cell phones and, and Google and play games. They talked with each other and they walked themselves through. So part of the skill of the young woman he chose, of the young girl he chose, was that her eyes reflected it all, but her eyes reflected what she, uh, what we imagined she was seeing, which she was not actually seeing because we had to protect her from the violence all around her. I think the children did an incredible job. I mean, all the actors were just amazing. Um, great, great actors, uh, absolutely brilliant. I hope they all get awarded for for their efforts. And, and the ch and the children were not the the children were not actors by training. He took uh, real children from a region where this occurred, and had it been seventy five or eighty years ago, it would have been them, and they understood that. Which brings an even bigger, more impact on the film right now. And as a historian, because you know how history repeats itself, how can we today, in today's day and age, in political unrest and what's happening, take this film as an example of, of horrors that have to be prevented so they don't happen again? So, what can we learn? What can we take away from this film um, so that history doesn't repeat itself again? Well, there's too much hatred too much violence, too much polarization. I think we need a period of time to calm down. And we also need um, to treat, to understand that human beings come in a, in a deep, um, uh, in, in all sorts of shapes, religions, backgrounds, ethnicity, and everything else. And we have to build on what unites us rather than what divides us. It is easy to ferment ethnic hatred and rivalries. 
it's easy to let violence call forth. It takes a lot more courage to move in a very different direction. Um, this also is what we would call contested history. And contested history means that the parties have not settled the history. They haven't come to terms with the history. One of the things we know in the Holocaust is that Germany has come to terms with what they did. And therefore they confess to what they did. They transform themselves into a democracy. They protect human rights and human dignity. And they're imperfect because hatred is fermenting throughout the world today. But that's what gives these films a, a more urgent quality and something that we must understand and must um, um, appreciate because the distance between tranquility and violence is, um, is uh, not that great. Absolutely. And, and I think the film came at the right time when we can take so much from this film and learn to love one another, like you said, no, and, and stop hatred and, and just make sure that this doesn't repeat again. But at the same time, why do you think that this hasn't been shown as much in films? Why, why is it taking so long for this to, um, to be brought on screen? And it happened in history. We have a lot on, like you well, said, the Jews and the Holocaust in Germany. First of all, uh, the Jews, the Holocaust in Germany, look, the Germans kept, kept meticulous records. The uh, Jews kept meticulous records. The Germans were interested in history. The Jews were interested in history. And consequently, they both grappled with this. Remember, these are still unsettled region. The whole region was, uh, Yugoslavia was many different states. It was held together during the um, uh, period of Tito's regime by the power and the charisma of Tito. Once Tito um, was no longer and it eroded, it erupted into many different nation states, rival different nation states. And then they had to fight it out again and again. And only recently has there been enough tranquility to uh, begin to grapple with this. Um, Gaga had the unique capacity because he is uh, from Serbia, but living primarily in America, and could consequently pull this off. Let me say one more thing about the film, which I think becomes interesting. It, it, show, it is of greater interest. It shows what we historians call the gray zone. The gray zone is not where people are all good or all bad. It shows good people who have moments in which they do awful things. It shows evil people who have moments in which they have a glimmer of compassion, a moment of decency, an act of generosity. And it shows um, also not only the, the, the Eustachia regime as uh, cruel and horrific, but it shows also that there were rescuers who came into the camp and took the children and therefore saved the lives of these children. And uh, it presents them in an honorable light, even though some of them were part of the Lebensborn uh, group, the notion of, of in, engaging, increasing your population by uh, kidnapping and, uh, and collecting these children and raising them as your own. So um, it's a, um, it, it, it gives you all the nuances of life. Absolutely. It, it's, that's why it's so overwhelming seeing this film and there's so many emotions and I cry through the whole thing because it, it's really hard to watch, but at the same time, a must to watch. Um, and there's one particular scene in, in the film that stood with me was when the German officer was at the camp and they were brutally killing um, the Mayo Serbs, and then Dara was watching, and then he said, well, welcome to the Balkans, and, and in a way, why Serbs? Why are you doing this to the Serbs? And the answer was, because they're Serbs, just because they're Serbs. And, and even you could see how, you know, the Germans were confused <laughs> with the brutality. Germans, wa Germans want to do that to the Jews because they were Jews? 
<laughs> and didn't understand why the 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 Croatians would want to do that to the um, to the Serbs. So consequently, he's saying, "Look, uh, you are." And there's a politics behind that. You're serving our interests. You're serving our interest by what? By um, by killing the Jews for us. And the Jews in Yasinovich were either killed there or they were shipped off to Auschwitz. So this was the uh, the the, the uh, Croatian contribution to the final solution. I mean, I was very close to a man who um, was. Uh, a great Hollywood producer, in fact, one of the producers of Schindler's List, who was deeply involved, uh, was sent from Croatia to Auschwitz as and part that, of that transport. And that's something else that I forgot to mention, that you were involved with other films uh, that were uh, Emmy nominated and, and received awards, and, and you were advising others as well in, on, in history. So. Your involvement in this film is very important to bringing it to light and telling that story of, of evil that um, and humanity at the same time, <laughs> which is and my and, and my my advice to Gaga and my advice to all filmmakers is the events are so dramatic, don't add drama to the events. Let the drama come forth. Be as it were a midwife to the whole thing. <laughs> This is a great, great advice. Don't overdo the drama. Uh, uh, final question, and I just want to thank you again for making this film and bringing humanity and telling those stories that deserve to be told uh, because of the brutality that all these victims went through. Um, what is one thing you want to leave us, leave us with today uh, in terms of history, the film, anything that's on your mind, what's happening today? Um, that I'm going to leave you um, with the following remarks um, of the German president um, at the 75th anniversary of Auschwitz, which was uh, a year ago yesterday. He said, I wish I, I could say never again, but there's too much evil in the world. I wish I could say never again, but there's too much hatred in the world. Therefore, I have to say never again as a commandment to go forth and to oppose that hatred and oppose that evil. And now I'm adding that has to be my task, your task, and our task. That's very powerful. And I hope everyone's task becomes bringing more peace and not violence and hatred so we can live in a better world for sure. Um, and thank you so much for your time again. Thank you for making this film, and I wish you the best of luck at the. Thank you. Race. Much appreciated. Thank you. Bye.